This video is part of the Three Body Problem series. This video will discuss the concept of cosmic sociology, which was introduced in Book 2, The Dark Forest of the Remembrance of Earth's Past series. In the universe of Three Body Problem, this is one of the mysterious truths about the universe that gets unraveled slowly and is also the core reason why Luo Ji, or Saul from the Netflix series, is a wall facer. Warning! This video contains spoilers for The Dark Forest. If you're interested in a discussion about why Saul is wall facer based on just season 1 of the Netflix series alone, then check out this other video on my channel. Without further ado, let's start discussing cosmic sociology. Cosmic sociology was first introduced during the tombstone conversation between Ye Wenjie and Luo Ji. Cosmic means relating to the universe outside of Earth, and sociology is the study of society and interactions. Put these two words together, cosmic sociology is kind of similar to sociology, but expanded to the universe scale. So, if more than one society exists, like the confirmation of the Trisolarans, or Santi, and Earth, how would these societies interact with each other in the universe? In our real life and in the books, this is a non-existent field of study because before Ye Wenjie found out about the Trisolarans or Santi, there was no evidence to us humans that anyone else existed in the universe. But since Ye Wenjie was the first one that confirmed the existence of another civilization, she also had a lot of time to herself to kind of start thinking about extraterrestrial intelligent life. So she made up the whole field of cosmic sociology after thinking about it, tinkering with these ideas, running it through her brain her whole life. And now passing it on to Luo Ji at this tombstone is kind of like her leaving her legacy. In the theory of cosmic sociology, there are two axioms. One, survival is the primary need of a civilization. And two, civilization continues to grow and expand, but the total matter in the universe remains constant. And these two axioms kind of reflect existing concepts that we've all learned about in school. The first axiom roughly matches biology and Darwinism, the concepts of evolution, survival of the fittest, and competition in nature. And the second axiom roughly matches the law of conservation of mass in physics. Mass cannot be created nor destroyed, but can be transformed or changed into various different states. The implication of these two axioms is that survival is a zero-sum game. It's not going to be a win-win situation because my gain is going to be at the expense of your loss, and your gain is going to be at the expense of my loss. So, there's always going to be winners and losers. That is basically the overarching assumption of this field. And it also makes sense when we think about biology, sociology, and economics as well. If only a certain amount of water exists and we need water to survive, and we want to survive to keep our species alive, then we'll compete with the others who want the same water. And we can substitute water with money or food or etc. and it's an intuitive situation. Moving further along, the two axioms are supported by two important underpinning concepts. One, chains of suspicion, and two, the technological explosion. Up until this point, everything was still part of the prologue of the Dark Forest book. And although this still seems like a somewhat philosophical discussion, Cosmic Sociology is actually the foundation of the title The Dark Forest. And this theory is absolutely fascinating on its own outside the sci-fi series. Such an amazing achievement of the author Tsu Xing Liao, but on the flip side, it's actually very spoiler heavy for the books. If you don't know what The Dark Forest really means, I'd recommend you to avoid learning about The Dark Forest. And also, spoiler warning if you haven't read up to the portion that discusses the concepts of chains of suspicion and the technological explosion in detail yet. These explanations are revealed deeper into the dark forest, and in the next section, I will be summarizing and simplifying these two concepts. To reiterate, the entire field of cosmic sociology touches on economics, game theory, psychology, fields of science, and sociology, which these two underpinning concepts will explore. Let's first assume that one civilization discovers that another one exists in the cosmos, such as, let's say, if Earth discovers another intelligent race and civilization exists in the universe, but they don't know about us yet. 
Chains of suspicion means that since one civilization cannot be sure whether the other one discovered is hostile or peaceful, then we as humans will be suspicious that the aliens will want to destroy us if they find out that we exist. Since we can't be sure whether they will destroy us or leave us alone or be nice to us, the safest option is to be the ones to be the bad guys first and destroy the others. The concept of the technological explosion is also important. Let's say one of these civilizations, maybe the aliens, is a lot less technologically advanced than we are. Pacifists may argue that the less advanced species may seem like not a threat and therefore don't need to be killed off and destroyed and can instead be left to live peacefully. However, the problem with that is, you never know when a civilization may suddenly rapidly advance with one huge technological explosion, making them very powerful, even more powerful in a blink of an eye. Since the universe is so vast and distances are so great at the cosmic scale, you can't be sure about what you're observing either. Perhaps what you're seeing now was the civilization at a primitive state, but you only found out about its existence eons later based on our technology, and what we see now is just a window into the past. Perhaps in real time, they have long surpassed us already. This great distance and differing levels of technology also means that there is no way to communicate quickly and accurately and effectively and too much time will pass in the process for suspicion to arise, brew, and fester. And windows of advancement opportunities can also make an originally peaceful civilization become hostile too. Even if we're able to create and invest in something like the Sophons that allow almost instantaneous communication, the great cost it takes to potentially communicate with someone is not as efficient and effective as simply eliminating them. The only reason the Trisolarans or Santi have not destroyed Earth is because they want to conquer the planet and live here themselves. However, it can be reasonably concluded that they will eliminate the human species though. Therefore, the conclusion is it is best to nip a potential enemy in the bud first, before they become a true threat on our doorstep. Armed with this information, Luoji or Saul has the first inklings of figuring out the Dark Forest paradigm. Check out my future video about the Dark Forest. What do you think? Do you think others might know about our existence? Or if we may actually know about someone else, but no one's telling us? I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments. If you like this video or learned something new or want to see more videos like this, please give a like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you for watching.